Lord, we want you to walk up and down these aisles tonight. Let us entertain your presence, oh God. Lord, we may be weak in our mind and our body and our spirit, God. But you're here, God, to change a life, to help us, Lord, to give us direction, God, to prosper us forward, oh Lord. We ask, God, that your spirit would break our walls.
crush the darkness. You made a fool out of death and grave. Oh, King Jesus. But oh, King Jesus, you made royals out of slaves. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's breakthrough. Now there's freedom in your name.
I said you ought to praise the Lord with everything you have. God is a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, some of you didn't believe that. I said God is a good God. And he deserves the praise. Oh, hallelujah. One more time, give the Lord all the praise you can. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's not too late to get your miracle. It's not too late to get your breakthrough. It's not too late to get what you came for. I know it's a Wednesday night. You precious people have worked. You have given of your time and your resources. And the Lord is not forgetful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He don't forget. And he is going to do what he said. And I believe that with my whole heart. Jesus is in the miracle business. Mm. Hallelujah. He's in the miracle business. Some of y'all, have y'all, have some of y'all made room for the miraculous yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. When it comes, you better have room for it. All right. Well, I'll say that again. When it comes, you better have made room for it. Can't let that miracle sleep out in the streets. Hallelujah. I give honor tonight to this wonderful church. And thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. And we have had an incredible week this week. It's been incredible. It has been incredible. And God has certainly been with us. And I, I just say thank you for allowing me to come and uh, be a part of what God's doing. And this precious church has uh, been better to me than I deserve. And... and so I'm thankful. Thank you for all the meals and the wonderful place that you provided for me to stay. And uh, thank you for your faithfulness. I think we ought to thank the Lord about that. Let's just thank the Lord and give yourself a hand for being faithful every night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I said last night I didn't intend not, I didn't intend not to tell the truth, but uh, I, I truly don't intend to be long tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, I believe the Lord's going to heal some folks here tonight. And uh, hallelujah. And I just, this is, a, this is a miracle church, a miraculous church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, it'll catch up with some folks here in a little bit. The revelation that you're standing in a miracle church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give honor to your pastor tonight. I thank the Lord for him. And I appreciate the Lord for his family. And uh, just great. I know you're standing. The book of Joel chapter number 2, verse number 1, and then verse number 14 through 17. And then we will read uh, verse number 26 through 28. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, by the Holy Ghost, the help of the Holy Ghost will It'll all come together. Praise the Lord. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. 
Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And uh, verse number 15, I'm sorry, verse number 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Verse number 17, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Verse number 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. That's powerful all by itself. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And the church said amen. amen. Tonight, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from this subject. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, but first, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, but first. Look at your neighbor and tell him God's going to have his way in this house tonight. God is going to have his way in this house tonight. Would you lift your hands and ask the Lord to help us? Father, I thank you for the wonderful power that comes from your word. There is no force on the universe like your word. Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But your word will not. I take a dominion and authority right now over every hindrance, every roadblock, every obstacle. I take authority over it right now. Somebody better worship the Lord one more time. I feel the Holy Ghost. I lose revelation and understanding in this house right now. I lose the gift of faith in this house right now. Lord, these people have worked all day. They've come out here and sacrificed their time and resources. And now I command your holy power to come upon them and revive and restore these bodies. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it's going to happen, I want you to clap your hands to the Lord and give the Lord a shout of praise. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody ought to praise him just one more time. Oh, somebody praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You can be seated, do whatever you want, but you won't be down long, I promise. Hallelujah. I believe with my whole heart that we are living in the last days. I don't believe we're almost in the last days. 
I don't believe we're kind of in the last days. I believe we're in the last days right now. If you don't believe that, you're living under a rock. If you don't believe that we're living in the last days, you're living in, uh, I, uh, not, you're not living in the present reality. Because all you got to do is pick up the newspaper. All you got to do is turn on the news. All you got to do is look at your phone and realize that the signs of the times are mandating and dictating that we are living in the last days. And before you get all caught up in the doom and gloom, I got news for you. I'm not preaching tonight that I know I'm in the last days just because bad things are happening. I, am lo I know that I am living in the last days because I want you to know that every miracle in the book of Acts is being recorded right now. I don't think you heard what I just said. Every miracle that happened in the book of Acts is happening right now. And I want you to know before the rapture of the church, every miracle in the book of Acts is going to happen in this church. Well, I'm not going to get a whole lot of people to say that they're right there. I said every miracle in the book of Acts is going to take place in this church before the rapture of the church. Blind eyes are going to open before the rapture of the church. You have to forgive me. My voice is not very strong tonight, but I'm going to give it all I got. I said, I'm going to tell this church, blind eyes are going to open in this church. The dead's going to be raised in this church. The lame is going to walk in this church. Come on, somebody, and it's going to happen through you. You're going to be a part of the greatest miracles that your eyes have ever seen. Yeah, yeah, miraculous deliverances are going to happen before the rapture of the church. Now, I've got news for you here tonight. I've got a missionary that I know. He's over there in the Middle East. I will not call his name here tonight uh, because we're on the Internet and I don't want that going out there and endangering his life. But I will tell you tonight, while we're looking at all the hell and chaos that's going on, I want you to know right now, in the Middle East, there's revival going on. Ain't no gonna get nobody to say nothing about that right there. I said there's revival going on in Afghanistan right now. There's revival going on in Pakistan right now. And I know a missionary over there. They was over there and uh, they got him over in this village and they said to him, we want you to come and talk to us about Jesus. Well, what they didn't, know, what he didn't know was, is they had tricked him, and they, uh, because over there, if you preach in the name of Jesus, you're going to die. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he was over there and he was preaching about Jesus and didn't know it, but they had him on a loudspeaker. And he was talking to the whole village about this man named Jesus. Well, they come down there and the Al-Qaeda come down there and arrested him and was going to kill him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that where they made their mistake is when they asked him, do you have any last words? Well, that's where they made a mistake because I want this church to know that when he said, oh, yes, I do, and he bowed his head to pray, and when he bowed his head, he vanished out of their sight, and when he lifted up his head, he was standing in his living room. I don't know why that's so hard for people to believe it happened in your Bible. Oh, 
Oh, somebody ought to praise him right now. Hello, it happened in your Bible, and it's happening right now. Because I want you to know God's going to have a church in this end time that's going to have miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah. Vanished right out of their sight. When he got back home, when he lifted up his head, he was standing in his living room. It freaked everybody out. Hello? Don't be acting like it wouldn't freak you out either. It would have blown your circuits. Hello? One minute you're there, and the next minute you're not. Shook the whole village up. Shook the whole village up. But ladies and gentlemen, what you don't understand is that we are one miracle away in this church from this whole city being turned upside down. We're one cancer patient away from this thing being turned upside down. Why do I know that? Because we are living in the last days. And because we're living in the last days, God's going to pour out his spirit without measure. Oh, somebody praise him in this house right now. If you believe that, you ought to get on your feet and praise the Lord right now in this house. God's miracle power is in this house tonight. And you don't need to wait for another service. You can get the miracle you need right now. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. You ain't got to uh, try to convince me. I'm convinced of what God's going to do. I was in a service not too long ago, and there was a young lady in that service. Ma'am, her, she was about 18 years old. In fact, yesterday, I believe it was, the young lady got on a plane and went to South Africa on a missions trip. She went over there, but before she did, a few weeks ago, I was in Mississippi preaching and she was down there and the gift of faith was in that service and uh, because I, I, I just believe in that I ain't gonna have it no other way I ain't coming to church and not expecting a miracle well praise the Lord in fact, I want to tell some of y'all, we're not having church for you to get your fix. I better not because I, I don't want to mess y'all up. We're not coming to church for you to have your religious fix. When you come to church, there ought to be an expectation in your spirit that says today, God is God. So she come down there, she was down there, and people were praying, and I saw her. That young lady's ankles were turned inward. They were turned inward. And uh, they literally had to fuse her ankle bones together. Uh, and she could not walk without any excruciating pain. But when I walked down there, I saw that she had faith for the miracle. I walked down there and I said, young lady, uh, get, take my hand. And I took her by the hand and I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to be made whole right now. And I got news for you. Instantly, those ankle bones popped out. Instantly those ankle bones popped and that girl was healed right there on the spot as she began. I tried to build faith in this house tonight for somebody to believe that you can be healed before you leave here tonight. 
I needed a miracle, I'd be praising God right now. Oh, if I needed a miracle in my body, I'd just plan on getting it right now. He, she was healed right then. Right then. Not 10 weeks later. Not 20 third therapy sessions later. But right then. Because that's the kind of God we serve. An immediate God. I believe here tonight that there are immediate miracles in this house right now. I got news for you. God ain't got to work anything up to heal your cancer. Well, praise the Lord. I thank God for what God's doing in this generation. Because this generation is going to be greater than any other generation that has been before it. Well, some of you believe that. I'm looking at young people in this room tonight that God's going to use in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm looking at young people in this room. You might as well get ready. God's going to start using them to prophesy. God's going to start using them in the gifts of the Spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Andrew, you need to get into your spirit. God's going to use you in the gifts of the Spirit. God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody better praise him right now. Somebody better praise him right now. He's going to use you in the word of knowledge. He's going to use you in the gift of discerning of spirits. Don't wait on me, y'all. The Holy Ghost is in here. God will use them in 20 years. Hogwash. Their minds are made up. Their spirits are hungry. Their hearts are ready. God's going to use them in this hour. Are you hearing me, Brother Logan? God's going to use you with the gifts of the Spirit. You're going to be sensitive to God. Brother Wyatt, are you hearing me? You're going to be used of God in this end time, son. You're going to be used of God. I'm looking at children in this house tonight that the enemy would like to take out because he knows the power and the potential that is upon them. God said... In this end time, that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Well, praise the Lord. Am I still in the Bible? Well, Brother Wade, they're not perfect. Well, Brother Wade, they don't have it all together. Well, neither do you. But I'm telling you, there are people in this room, you're not perfect. You may not have it all together. But if you've got a desire to be used of God, God's going to use you in this city. Oh, if you want to be used of God, throw your hands in the air and pray in the Holy Ghost right now.
prophesying to you tonight. There is a level of prayer that is getting ready to come on this church that has never been on this church before. I'm prophesying to this church tonight that there is a hunger for the move of the Holy Ghost that's going to come upon this church that has never been before. I feel something here right now. Brother Wade, listen to me, brother. I literally hate the devil. We are not friends. We're not buddies. We're not pals. I despise him. He despises me. Destroys lives. Destroys marriages. Wrecks people's lives. Takes people out. I hate him. But to read the thing, well, by the way, you shouldn't use that kind of vernacular. Well, if you don't hate sin, you'll gravitate towards it. We're not calling a truce with each other. But one of the reasons I hate the enemy more than anything is because, Pastor, that devil is a deceiver. And I hate that spirit of deception. And I'm going to tell this church something tonight. Every person in this room is going to be used of God powerfully. Everybody. I hate that devil. But the reason I hate him is because he's a deceiver, son. He is a deceiver. He is he wants to deceive people. And I got news for you tonight. I am not going to mention their names, but we've got a young lady in our church that was mightily used of God and the devil deceived her. I'm talking about, bro, I've never I don't know if I've ever seen a young lady that anointed her, but the enemy deceived her and Allah, and she fell prey to the devil and she fell out of the church I'm talking about seemingly overnight y'all still with me right now I'm talking about seemingly overnight fell out of the church walked away from the things of God was no longer what she was supposed to be well brother Wade that didn't happen overnight you're absolutely right but I don't know where the deception started but I'm telling you here tonight God spoke to my spirit and said she's been taken captive of the devil and I come to tell this church tonight that there are sons and daughters in this house that are going to prophesy. There are people going to be used of God. The glory of God is going to be poured out in this city. The Lord said to me, Bobby, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. But first... I said, but first what? He said, but first, there must be a holy protest. Somebody has got to protest the bondage of my people. Somebody has got to protest the bondage that people have fallen into. Okay, I know what I'm talking about in the Holy Ghost. God's trying to raise this church up. We can't just roll our eyes when the devil takes somebody out of this church. I don't think you heard what I just said. I said we can't just roll our eyes when the devil takes somebody out of this church. I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to go into holy warfare and say you're not going to take them out. 
Come on. We need to protest the bondage of that backslider. We need to protest the bondage that they're in. Come on, young people. This is the most protesting generation that we've ever seen. But they're protesting the wrong thing. We need to be protesting the bondage of God's people. There are backsliders in this region tonight that the devil has deceived. Lord, there are people that the devil has deceived and has taken away captivity. And God wants to know where are the protesters? Where are the ones that will protest in my holy mountain? Where are the ones that will protest at my altar? I'm going to tell this church something right now. It will protest in the altar. It will move heaven. God said, I want to know where are the priests that will weep between the porch and the altar. Where are the priests? He said, blow the trumpet of Zion. He said, declare a, a solemn assembly. We can't afford to sit around and laugh and cut up jokes when people backslide. I know this is a little heavy, but I'm going to tell you something right now. We are in a, we are in a very pivotal moment. This church has broken barriers this week. And God said, because you've broken barriers, I'm laying upon you the responsibility to protest against those things that have robbed my people of their joy and have robbed my people of their peace. Oh, throw your hands in there and pray in the Holy Ghost one more time. Oh. Yeah. Where are the protesters? Where are the ones that are going to protest? Where are the ones that are going to protest? I'm going to tell you something right now. That precious young woman at our church, that precious young woman at our church that was taken captive of the devil, it made me mad. And for weeks I got mad. For weeks I stayed mad because it didn't look like anybody really cared. Oh, yes, the bishop cared. Oh, yes, the pastor cared. Oh, yes, a few others cared. But instead of really caring, other people just sat there and poke fun. Other people sat there and made snide comments. And it stirred up my spirit. And God said to me, what they need is a holy protest. And if somebody will protest that bondage. And I want you to know, they, the church got to protesting that bondage. what this church has got to do. This church has got to protest the bondage of every backslider out of this church. And that young lady, it, the enemy tried to have his way with her. But the church went into a holy protest that I want you to know the young people of that ch our church went into warfare. My own daughter, every night before she went to bed, began to cry that girl's name out every night and made up her mind, I wasn't going to be comfortable while that girl was in bondage. And I want you to know, just a couple of weeks ago, that girl walked back in that church. God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How did it happen? It wasn't because of holy protest. Somebody protested the bondage. Somebody protested the bondage. Somebody besides the ministry protested the bondage. Am I, am I 
tired of talking to anybody. Am I just talking to me? I hope I, I didn't come here to bore y'all tonight. I didn't come here to be a downer. But we need some people in this church that'll get off the sideline, like I said last the other night, and get into battle and stand in protest. Does she have a long way to go? Yes. Has she made some mistakes? Yes. Has sin marred her life? Yes. But I, 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 I know that's what happened. But I know the grace of God can erase the scars. I know the grace of God. And God began to deal with me. And he said, where are the protesters? I said, God, what are you talking about protesting? He said, you know, he said, this generation is the most protesting generation that there's ever been. It's a signal, my brother. You don't believe me? They're walking out of schools protesting. Yeah, they're protesting about abortions right now. They're, they're, they're protesting about alternative lifestyles right now while the church stays silent. Well, Brother Wade, are you suggesting we get signs and go out there and picketing? Absolutely not. But what the Holy Ghost is suggesting in this service, that we can come to this house. You can get down in your house and you can get your face in the carpet and you need to say, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to keep them bondage. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to hold them captive. Where are the protesters in this church that says enough is enough? Enough is enough. Lift your hands and worship the Lord right now. Oh, I'm coming to an end. I, I ain't going to be here all night. Oh, yeah. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. But first, there must be a protest. Oh, yeah. Brother Wade, how can I prove that? Because the scripture said in Joel 2.28, in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. But in verse 17, before I pour out my spirit, there must be somebody to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Where are the priests? I said, well, God, what about this protest? And I'm coming to an end. What about this protesting? He said, I said, what about it? He said, do you not remember? Don't you remember that my servant, my servant Mordecai, protested in the streets? My servant Mordecai protested in the streets. He laid at the king's gate. He did something that was against the law. You were not allowed to weep and cry at the king's gate. But he said, I refuse to be comforted when my people are about to be slaughtered. And God is saying for this church, I'm getting ready to bless you with abundance like you've never had. I'm getting ready to pour out on you stuff you've never seen. But what I want you to do is when you're being blessed, I want to know where are the protesters in this house. And I'll say, no, not only do I want a blessing of finances, I want to see the backsliders come home. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet. Everybody in this room, I'm coming to a close. Oh, and he protested in the city streets. And Queen Esther, it was her uncle. Queen Esther got down there and said, what do you think you're doing? You're going to get yourself killed. The king will get mad. And they tried to give him salt. 
They tried to appease him with some nice clothes. Tried to give him a nice ride back to the house. And Mordecai said, get that away from me. I'm not sitting here in soft raiment while you're in bondage. I'm not. I can't do it. I can't allow. I can't allow you to sit in bondage and wear soft clothing and the devil's preparing the gallows for you. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. That girl tonight, oh yeah, that anointed young woman of God was robbed of her power and her virtue. Lied to by the devil. But the saints of God protested until it turned. Whew. Oh yeah. That's why my brother, when we come to the house of God, when we're at home, I'm not being a voice of rebuke here tonight, my brother. I come to tell this church, because this is a great church, I come to tell this church that the enemy just wants us to be okay with just having the gifts of the Spirit and having just a good move of God while others sit in captivity. That's a trick of the enemy. That's a trick of the devil. God said, I don't want you just getting caught up and having blessings. Son, listen to me. God's not interested in you just being used in the gifts of the Spirit. Brother Logan, God's not just interested in you being used in the gifts of the Spirit. He wants you to be that priest that will stand at his altar and protest the bondage. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. But first, we need a holy protest. If it was your child, you'd want somebody to protest their bondage. Mm -hmm. If it was your mama, you'd want somebody to protest their bondage. If it was your backslidden child, you'd want somebody to protest their bondage. If it was your child that had a prison sentence hanging over their head, you'd want them to protest their bondage. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. If it was one of your loved ones that was facing all kinds of troubles, you'd want them to protest on their behalf. God said, we're standing here in this house tonight and there is enough power in this house to shake loose every prison cell. There is enough power in this house tonight to protest and shake loose. I feel it in this house tonight. I'm sorry I, I didn't come here to be a downer. You precious people have come faithfully every night. But I've come here tonight to tell this church on this last night. I've come to tell you tonight that there are prison cells that can be opened tonight and you can see come on if you got some loved ones in a prison I want you to get your hand I'm not talking about the state penitentiary I'm talking about sin's hell and sin's prison you ought to lift your hands right now and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost yeah yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah, wait, we're getting ready to come to the altar now, my brother, I admit to you, I know this is a strange message to end a revival on. I admit to you, but God began to deal with me about 10 minutes before I got up here, and he said to me, Bobby, 
I want you to tell my people how blessed they're going to be. How I'm going to use them. How I'm going to pour out my spirit upon them. How I'm going to pour out without measure the anointing they desire. The, the miracles of the seed they have sown. That's ironclad. They ain't nothing going to reverse that. But I tell you what I know. God said, I don't want them just to be happy with being blessed. Look at them. Look at them. The Huggins family. In bondage tonight. Emily Romo. Who's going to protest her bondage? Who, who's going to protest Seth Ritchie's bondage? Who's going to protest Cedric Cruz's bondage? Who's going to protest Amy Ritchie's bondage? Who's going to protest Jason Lattimore's bondage? Who's going to protest? I'm concerned with some of you here tonight. Because some of you should have been out of your seat already. Some of you should have been at the front of this church. Some of you. Somebody. Somebody. Somebody should protest Evan Cripps' bondage tonight. Somebody! You ought to protest their bondage. <laughs> Chloe Braswell, we're coming for you! <laughs> Brittany Farrell Page, we're coming for you! Isaac Walker, we're coming! <laughs> Hannah Walker, we're coming! Adam West, we're coming! Rebecca West, you're coming out of that prison! You're coming out! You're coming out! Yeah, somebody's got to stand in the gap. Somebody's got to stand in this altar and tell hell you're going to turn them loose right now. You're going to turn them loose right now. Come on. It's time to get good and angry about what the devil's trying to do to you. It's time to get good and angry about what the enemy's doing. Come on, Elizabeth Prater. We're coming for you. Come on, Elizabeth Prater. You're not going to stay in that prison. That's it. That's it. That's it, new life. That's it, new life.
that's it, new life. Come on, they're going to be reconciled. Come on, they're going to be restored. And they're going to be repurposed. That's what this protest is about tonight. Come on. Don't stop it. Don't stop until you see him reconciled in the spirit. Don't stop until you see him restored in the spirit. Don't stop until you see him repurposed. Just because you think they're too far gone, they're not. Just because you think they're too far gone, they're not. They're not. God's hand can still reach them. Your prayers can still take them out of bondage. Come on, can you see him coming back to this church? Are you praying until you can see him coming through those doors? Are you praying until you can see them coming home? They went out full, but they're coming home empty. But they're coming home at the right time. Oh,